uh, we can now uh, solve our model, our dynamic model of Slack. Um, the first step is to understand the dynamics of the model. And, uh, you know, so this is the dynamic model and um, the uh, behavior of households is described by a differential equation. So, you know, in normal times, it's described by another equation. Here, it's a little bit more complicated, but basically, you have two equations that involve consumption and the cost state variable on um, the budget constraint that's also governed by a differential equation. So, this could lead to dynamics in the model. Um, so, let's try to understand that. Um, We'll see, however, here that since there are no sharks, and furthermore, they, um, you know, the costed variable or the consumption of household is going to be, uh, is not a state variable. Um, it's, so it's not uh, predetermined at time t. So dynamics actually are going to boil down something very simple. Um, so they're not going to be uh, really problematic. Uh, So here um, we have the key differential equation here is um, basically the Euler equation um, describing consumption and um, saving over time. So um, this other equation, you will remember that it looks something like this. So it's gamma dot t is equal to um, delta minus rt gamma t minus sigma prime wt minus w bar t. Okay, uh, so we got that when we solve the optimal behavior by household. Now, a couple of things that uh, we can simplify here. So first of all, uh, the real interest rate RT is equal to R uh, at all points. That's because of um, how monetary policy is set, the nominal interest rate is fixed, and how the, the, the prices are set, inflation is fixed. So that's because inflation plus uh, nominal interest rate are fixed. Okay, so that's the first thing that will simplify the fact that the real interest rate doesn't vary over time. Second thing is that here we have uh, homogeneous uh, households. So with homogeneous households, they are all going to hold the same amount of wealth. And because everybody holds the same amount of wealth, we know that necessarily the real wealth of the household is the same as the average wealth in the economy uh, at any point in time. Okay, and so that means that when the households evaluate uh, their relative wealth to be able to decide how they are going to consume the same, then, you know, uh, in practice, they look around, they see that everybody is the same, and so uh, their relative wealth is just going to be zero. So that's going to simplify the analysis, because now what we can see is that the, our Euler equation is going to simplify to the following equation. So gamma dot of t is just delta minus r gamma of t minus sigma prime of zero, which is um, just a fixed number. Okay. So here what we can see, so we can flag that. Here we have a first order uh, linear uh, differential equation that tells us how the cost state variable moves over time. Um, 
And so what are the properties of this differential equation? Well, to see that, we can just uh, we can plot a phase line. So that is, we'll plot gamma dot as a function of gamma. Um, and this is going to tell us how gamma is going to evolve over time. So, you know, a phase line is just, it's uh, a very simple phase diagram when you have only one differential equation. Usually phase diagrams that, as we are used to studying in them in macro, is when you have two differential equations. And so you put a variable on the vertical axis, a variable on the horizontal axis, and you look at how the, the two variables evolve over time. When you, have, well, you, when you are looking at only one variable, you don't need a whole phase diagram, you can just have a phase line that's going to tell you how that variable varies over time. Uh, so it's very easy to construct such a phase line. So to construct the phase line, what you do is uh, you put a horizontal line on which you have your variable. So here I put my variable gamma. To know how gamma moves over time, I add a vertical axis. And on that vertical axis, I'm going to plot gamma dot. So when um, you know, when gamma dot is positive, gamma tend to increase over time. When gamma dot is negative, gamma decreases over time. Uh, here I have zero. Um, okay. So what happens when gamma equal to zero? We can see here uh, that when gamma equal to zero, gamma dot is minus sigma prime of zero. Minus, uh, so sigma prime of zero is a marginal utility of wealth. It's positive. So minus sigma prime of zero is going to be negative. So here I have minus sigma prime of zero. Okay, then we can see that gamma dot is just linearly increasing in gamma and uh, the slope of the uh, function gamma dot as a function of gamma is delta minus r. So we'll have just a line. Okay, so this here, what I've plotted is delta minus r which is positive because we assume that the real rate is always less than delta. Otherwise, the model doesn't have a proper solution. So this is growing at the rate delta minus r, gamma minus sigma prime of zero. Here we have an intercept. So what is that intercept? It's a point where gamma dot is equal to zero. But here what we can see is that gamma dot equals zero. So here we're looking for the critical point of the differential equation. That implies that gamma is equal to sigma prime of zero divided by delta minus r. So here I can also flag that this is the critical point of our differential equation. So this is what I have here. This is gamma. Okay, so now, all right, so we know that gamma, when it's equal to sigma prime of zero divided by delta minus r, this is, uh, so this is a critical point of our differential of our differential equation. So this is a point where when gamma is there, it stops moving. Now what happens when gamma is above that critical point when we can see that gamma dot is positive, so gamma tends to increase? What happens when gamma is below gamma dot, uh, is below uh, sigma prime zero divided by <coughs> delta minus r? Gamma dot is negative, so gamma tends to decrease. So here we have we have our you know we have our phase line that shows uh, the critical point of the differential equation and then it shows that when we are away from that critical point if I'm above it gamma becomes even bigger if I'm below it gamma becomes even smaller so here what we can see is that our system is a source right because uh, because when you're not at the steady state you're moving away from it. Okay, so now, all right, so we've solved that differential equation, we found the critical point, we see that our system is a source. So what do we learn from this? Well, the key thing is that, the key thing that we have is that gamma uh, is a, a costed variable. And we know that it's, uh, we know that gamma is, you know, is pro proportional Oh, not exactly proportional, but is determined by consumption. We saw that when we solved the house of problem. So, of course, since consumption is non-determined, it's a non-predetermined uh, variable at time t. So, 
for instance, wealth is a predetermined variable at time t because your wealth at t was determined by how much you've saved in the past. Consumption is a non-predetermined variable at time t because you can de decide to consume whatever you want at time t. So gamma is a non-predetermined variable. So it means that it can jump at time t. Okay. So because of that, so we know that gamma can jump at time t. And so what we can see on the phase line, so if, for instance, uh, gamma jumped here, then what would happen is that then gamma would start increasing over time and it would diverge to infinity and therefore consumption would also diverge to infinity or to zero. Uh, and therefore it would violate either the transversality condition or it would, uh, or it would violate uh, some of the um, basically resource constraints in the economy if you want consumption to be infinity. Uh, similarly, if gamma jumps below our critical point, then we know that it's going to fall over time and it's going to become uh, negative at some point. And so therefore, but that you know it means that it's going to basically become zero. So it's going to violate also some um, transversality condition uh, of the model. So in both situations, basically, the, uh, your gamma is going to uh, is going to be like non-interior and violate some transversality condition or you know production function, resource constraint, something like this. Uh, so the only thing that can happen to solve that system without violating this other condition is that gamma actually jumps, gamma has to jump to the critical, to the critical point. So gamma must jump to this, to uh, sigma prime of zero divided by delta minus r at t equal zero. Because if it doesn't, then it jumps somewhere else and then it's going to diverge uh, in a way that's uh, that's non-optimal. So gamma, the costed variable, must jump to the critical point, to the sigma prime equal zero divided by delta minus r. That's because otherwise, um, otherwise gamma is not interior. You know, it'll converge to plus infinity or it'll converge to minus infinity. And in the models that we have here, non-interior solutions are never optimal. We're, we're going to see that in a second. So um, Anything that's non-interior, uh, and you know, if gamma is non-interior, it means that consumption, which is the directly related to gamma, would be non-interior. It'll go to zero or it'll go to plus infinity. That's never going to be optimal. So it has to be that gamma jumps to the critical point here. Uh, so at time t equals zero, the model starts. Gamma has to jump here. That's the only thing that's optimal. And so uh, what we learn from the dynamics is that uh, although uh, gamma, which is our costed variable, and equivalently consumption, which is directly related to gamma, are given uh, by a differential equation. Uh, gamma and C is directly uh, jump to uh, you know, the critical point of the dynamical system. At t equals zero. So the dy uh, dynamical system at t equals zero. And so as a result, the, you know, the, there are no dynamic transition to the critical point. There's no transition to the critical point, you know, unlike what you would have, say, in a solo model, where you have a state variable, which is capital, would jump in. So consumption does jump to a saddle pass, but then capital takes time to reach the critical point of the dynamical system. Here, there are no transition to, criti to the critical point. If you want, uh, the transition is immediate. Yes, so it's a dynamic uh, model with a dynamical system, but the transition occurs immediately. Okay, so we're directly going to jump to that point. So 
So at t equals zero, what we learn from this is that uh, at t equals zero, gamma, so we said, is going to jump to sigma prime zero divided by delta minus r. Uh, and therefore, we know that consumption uh, is directly related to our uh, costed variable. So consumption So at time t equals zero, consumption is going to be given by c is equal to uh, delta minus r divided by sigma prime of zero. So the inverse of uh, the costate variable times one over one plus star of theta. Uh, to the power of epsilon. And this is from uh, this is from the other necessary condition in uh, the consumption saving problem of uh, the household. And here, a key thing is that so here we have an interior pass for consumption because consumption jumps to this value. Notice that this value here. The C is strictly positive because R is strictly less than delta, uh, and it's also strictly less than infinity. So here we found, um, so when C jumps to this value, gamma jumps to this value and they stay at that level, we found a path for consumption and the costal variables that are interior. So you know we don't reach the boundary of, of our uh, of our problem, that is, consumption strictly positive is not infinite. So, costed variable is, you know, it's always finite and uh, positive. So, we found an interior solution. We found that this interior solution satisfies all the necessary conditions. So, it satisfies the two uh, necessary conditions that I highlighted. You know, that the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to consumption is zero, the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to wealth is equal to what it has to be. Um, furthermore, the transversality condition is going to be satisfied here because, um, you know, uh, the costed variable has a fixed value, consumption has a fixed value, uh, so your real wealth is going to have a fixed value, and so once you discount it with an exponential discounting, it's going to converge to zero. So for sure, the transversality condition are satisfied. So here, all my necessary conditions are satisfied, and from the theorem I mentioned earlier, because I have a concave production function, I have a linear budget constraint, I found an interior pass that satisfies the necessary condition. I know that this interior pass, uh, I know that my, uh, I know that this interior pass will be the unique global maximum of uh, the household's problem. Okay, so because here I have a problem that's well behaved, since I found an interior solution, uh, I know that not only I know that this is going to be the unique uh, maximum of the household problem. Uh, so I'm all set, you know, and that's because I've focused on and I've looked for an interior solution. Okay. So now we found what happens at time zero. We know where consumption jumps to. I use this value for consumption to uh, construct an aggregate demand. And then using my aggregate demand and using my aggregate supply, I'll be able to find tightness. And then once I have tightness, I've found everything. Because here, you know, what's key in this model is that although it's a dynamic model, my consumption jumps to some value at time zero. And therefore, you know, there are no, there are no transition at all. So the only thing I have to do is find, you know, uh, at time zero, what is the, the tightness that's going to satisfy all the conditions of the model. And then once I have tightness, I can back out everything. You see that here, the condition I have here links consumption demanded by household to tightness. And therefore, I've used this to construct an aggregate demand curve that then combine with the aggregate supply I'll use to actually solve for tightness and everything else. Uh, so what we learn from this dynamic analysis is that in fact, there are no meaningful dynamics in the model. There are no transition. You're going to jump only to one, uh, one point at time zero. Uh, but I'll use this result here to construct an aggregate demand curve and then find the tightness that solves the model. Uh, 